Hello, uh, students. This is Mr. McAllen again, and uh, now we're going to work on 7 through 10, and it's equation solving. And remember, I, I just wanted to uh, reemphasize that in equation solving, you've got to recognize what type of equation you're dealing with. Um, this next one, number 7, is actually um, quite easy. It's a um, linear equation, and it's I know it's linear because uh, there are no x's in the exponent spots, and uh, so we have um, 6 times 3x minus 1 equals 24. Uh, this is actually a very easy equation to solve. Um, you know, uh, if you multiply through by the 6, you could solve it a variety of ways, but um, I'll just multiply through by the 6, and you get 18x minus 6 equals 24. You're going to add 6 to both sides, um, and you're going to get 30 and then you're going to have x equals 30 over 18. And, you know, reduce the fraction. You'll get, um, if you divide uh, everything by 6, if you divide the 6 out of it, you're going to get um, 5 over 3 for your final answer. So, um, you know, you should always take, uh, take the solutions that you get and plug them back in. So if I try that, I have 6 times 3. And I'll put in my 5 over 3 answer, minus 1. Does that, in fact, equal 24? And um, what happens here is you get 6, and you multiply 3 by 5 thirds, and that's equal to 5. And this, in fact, does equal 24. So um, that checks out. I'm going to move along to the next equation, where we have an exponential form. So I have 4 to the 9 minus 3x equals 64. So this is an exponential type, and when you have an exponential type, you uh, like this, a pure exponential, um, it, you first see, before you do any advanced methods, can you um, change uh, both sides to have the same base? And in this case, we can. So we have 4, and this is going to be uh, 9 minus 3x, and on the other one, we have 4 raised to the third power. So in this case, um, once you convert the bases to be the same, you just would set the exponents equal to each other. So this is nice. We have 9 minus 3x equals 3. And um, then you would solve. You'd have negative 3x equals negative 6. x equals 2. And when we go back and check this out, we just plug 2 in, and you would have 4. to 9 minus 3 times 2. I'm plugging the 2 back into the original spot, does that equal 64? And in this case, you end up getting 4 to the third, which does equal 64. So congratulations, you've just solved that problem. Now we have on number 9, a log equation to solve. So on number 9, you have log base 16 of x equals 1 half. Now, when you have uh, the type of equation where you have a log equals a number, the best way to solve this is to just switch it back to exponential form. In this case, you would write 16 raised to the 1 half power equals x. And in this case, remember half power is really square root. So your answer for this would be 4. And you should try that out. You should see if it works, where you put 4 in for x and you say, um, you know, does 16 raised to 1 half power equal 4? And, well, that's actually how we solved it. So that does verify our answer. On the last one, number 10, I'm just going to rewrite it down here so we can see it. Um, we have a log, common log, because there's no base number, minus another common log equals another common log. So whenever you have a log, to, whenever you have logs subtracted or added to logs um, on one side, and um, you have to compress the logarithms. So remember, when we subtract logarithms, that's really the logarithm of a quotient of the two terms that were in both logs. So I have x plus 10. Uh, this is from log properties. Um, let me just look up and verify that I have that's x plus 4. So I want to make sure that's right equals the common log of x. Once you have a, a log of something is equal to a log of something else, uh, you have a single log on each side, you're allowed to um, concentrate on setting the inside 
uh, the interior of the log equations equal. So we'll just drop the logarithms and we'll have x plus 10 over x plus 4 is equal to plain old x. In this case, to solve this problem, it, we have to use cross multiplication. x plus 10 is equal to x times x plus 4. And you multiply through, you have x squared plus 4x equals x plus 10. And uh, when you know it, now we have a quadratic equation we're trying to solve. So remember when we did quadratics in the other part of the review, when you have a quadratic, all the terms get moved over to one side. So I have x squared. I'm going to subtract the x and of 3x minus 10. And now I have x minus 2 as a factor and x plus 5 as a factor which tells me that my two answers are x equals 2 and x equals negative 5. You have one more thing to worry about here. You cannot have a logarithm of a negative number. So you need to plug both of these answers back into the original equation. And if you get a logarithm of a negative number, you've got problems. So when I plug 2 in, um, I'll just zoom out a bit. When I plug 2 in, I have log of I'm using the original equation just to check to make sure I don't get a negative in a logarithm. So I have log base 10 of 12 minus log base 10 of 6. Does that equal log base 10 of 2? And that actually does, and that works because the subtraction turns this into 12 over 6 inside, which equals log of 2. Now we're, so x equals 2 is a solution. Let's try x equals negative 5. So I'll, again, I'll plug it back into the original equation of log base 10 of um, 5, because I put negative 5 in, minus log base uh, 10 of negative 1. Uh-oh, can't have that. Equals log base 10, common log of negative 5. Well, the domain of a logarithm does not allow a negative value inside of the logarithm. So you have to um, discard that solution as being um, extraneous. Okay, hopefully this has helped you, and I'm hoping that the video is in over 10 minutes. So, um, you know, make sure you practice solving log equations and these exponential equations before the midterm.